Hi, today I'll be showing you a quick guide on how to make your own pour over coffee at home. Let's start with the equipment. First thing that you need is a digital scale with a timer. Scales are important to have more accurate measurements and to produce more consistent brews. Otherwise, your coffee might taste different each time you brew it. Next would be your fresh coffee beans. As per experience, coffee beans are at its best between the 5th up to the 30th day after the roast date. Uh, the roast date can usually be found on the packaging. Now, what if your coffee beans are more than 30 days old already? Can you still use it? The answer is yes, but of course, the aroma and the flavor wouldn't be as good anymore. Another question that you might ask is, ground coffee or whole coffee beans? For best results, you should always buy whole coffee beans. When coffee is ground, the amount of surface area exposed is increased. More coffee exposed, more CO2 is being released. Within 15 minutes of being ground, your coffee has already lost about 60% of its aroma and flavor. So remember, always grind only when you're about to brew. Now, since you're buying cool coffee beans, you need to have your own burr grinder. Compared to blade grinders, these burr grinders produce more consistent and uniform grind size for our coffee, which is an important variable in the brewing process. Next thing you need, of course, is your brewer. Now, there are a lot of available brewers in the market, but for this guide, I will be using a classic V60, as it is one of the more affordable ones, and it is actually quite easy to use. You'll also need a filter. I prefer using a white bleach paper filter such as this one. Last but not the least, you need a gooseneck kettle with a temperature gauge. Gooseneck kettles give you more control on your pouring. The speed, precision, and amount of your pour, even the temperature of the water being used will all affect the taste of your coffee. Alright, so now that we have all our equipment, we can start brewing. But before we do, let me explain to you the parameters we're going to use. For the beans, I'm using Ethiopian Cochere. This is a light roasted coffee. I prefer using light roast coffee as it has more flavor and notes compared to the dark roasted ones. We'll be using a medium fine grind size. This is the standard grind size for the pour over method. It is quite difficult to describe how a medium fine looks like. Generally it resembles table salt. For the water temperature we'll be using 92 degrees celsius. So the lighter the roast, the higher the temperature. So dark roasted coffees would have around 88 to 89 degrees Celsius. Our brew ratio would be 1 is to 15, meaning for 10 grams of coffee, for example, we'll be using 150 grams of water. My target brew time would be 2 minutes and 30 seconds to about 3 minutes. I usually start by rinsing the filter and preheating the brewer. Use hot water to rinse the filter to remove any papery taste and at the same time preheating the brewer. Don't forget to throw the rinsed water. It is important to preheat the brewer so that we can maintain a constant temperature throughout the brewing process. So for this one, I'll be using 15 grams of coffee. 15 grams of coffee should yield around 225 grams. Now we're ready to grind. Carefully transfer your coffee to the V60. Lift and tap a little to make sure the grounds are leveled. Now we can start the pre-infusion, or what we also like to call the blooming stage. The initial water you pour should be twice the amount of your coffee input. In this case, since I used 15 grams of coffee at the beginning, I'm pouring 30 grams of water. And I'll be waiting for about 30 to 45 seconds. The purpose of blooming is to saturate all the coffee grounds and to help the carbon dioxide release so it doesn't get in the way of extraction. Some people, myself included, like to agitate the coffee at this point. So to agitate meaning to disturb the coffee slurry. 
Since this is a beginner's guide, I won't be talking about that yet, as that is just one more variable that we might mess up. After 30 to 45 seconds, you can start pouring again. Start pouring in the middle in slow concentric circles, so that's from inside to outside, trying to get all the ground wet as evenly as possible. The added water should be nearly as the same rate as the water exiting the cone. The purpose of this is of course to maintain the brewing temperature. If the temperature fluctuates too much, extraction might not be even and flavors won't be consistent. When you're done pouring all your water, pick up the brewer, swirl, then drop to create the flat bed. Now you can serve your coffee. If the coffee turned out to be too strong for you, adjust the grind size to a more coarser grind. If it's too bland, adjust to a more finer grind. Ultimately, your taste buds will be your guide. You don't have to follow everything by the book. At the end of the day, if what's in the cup suits your taste, then you've done a good job. I will be doing more coffee content in the future, so if you're interested, subscribe to my channel. See you again next time.